today's video is starting off at the wee house. <laughs> the wee house in the middle of the River Shin has quite a backstory. Built by locals as part of an annual gala, the village decided to place the house on the tiny island rather than throwing it away. It's since been rebuilt a number of times due to damage from bad weather. The locals even put up fake information boards along with a tale of a man who was gifted the land. There's even photos that have been edited to look older, fooling tourists into thinking the story dates back to 1824. It's actually just a bit bizarre. It's so random. I keep saying the wee house, but it is actually the wee hoose. Um, yeah, super random. I've now headed to a little park up, which is actually on park for night, but I'm not sure I'm going to stay here for the night, but I'm definitely going to spend a few hours here this afternoon. now to find a park up for the night. I am in a car park for a hiking trail which tends to be good for um, the parking up for the night. There is another camper van here and I imagine a few more will arrive as the evening goes on. There tends to be a few about each time that I've stayed somewhere. I'm just gonna tidy up the van a bit. All of this mess just gets thrown on here um, and I still have all my washing up from the campsite. It's clean, I just haven't put it away. So, just a bit of a tidy up. I thought I would show the park up tonight because I don't really do that. Um, but it's just this spot here, cool mountains in the background, and then there is water here. You can just about see that on camera. Here's little Shelly. There is a camp van behind me, so I don't want to like get them in the shot too much. I don't want to annoy my new camper van friends. Not a bad little spot. The road up there is quite noisy, but I imagine it will get quieter during the night. But this is on park for night. All of the places that I stop or wild camp are on park for night. And I usually spend a fair amount of time researching them to make sure they've got good reviews and things like that. I'm quite picky, I guess, about where I stay. Um, just being a solo traveller, I feel like it's important to make sure I'm really comfortable with where I'm sleeping. I cooked some dinner and spent the rest of the evening watching the sunset over the water. Five hours later, the bed is put away. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah. So after some back and forth about whether to go to John Robin Castle, I have decided I am going to go <laughs> to the castle. I figured I'm, I'm only going to do this route once, so I might as well go and visit the castle. It should be nice. It does look really nice online and I wasn't too fussed about going inside, but 
your ticket allows you inside in the gardens that you can't just pay to go into the gardens so i might as well actually go and have a look around and and appreciate the castle as well i'm heading further north along the east coast towards john o'groats and i'm kind of in a bit of a limbo space i guess there, there doesn't seem to be a lot on this kind of little stretch of the coast that i'm on so i feel like i've crammed so many adventures into the last couple of videos and then now i'm a bit like oh not tons to do i'm gonna do some work and i'll see you at the castle I stayed at a campsite and the guy asked me what my name was I said Helen and he said ah oh, Lady Helen and I didn't really know what he was talking about I thought he was being a bit weird but there was actually a Lady Helen Sutherland and she resided at Dunrobin Castle for a while um, and she was very kind of senior I guess in terms of what a lady could be but it was pretty cool never have style or class to this standard ever again will we it's just something else really it's amazing i think i shall go forth as lady helen from this point on <laughs> if jonathan bailey wants to show up and be all moody by count then feel free <laughs> look at it Dunrobin Castle is one of Britain's oldest houses dating back to the early 1300s. It was home to the Earls and later the Dukes of Sutherland. The Earldom of Sutherland is one of the seven ancient earldoms of Scotland and the Sutherlands were one of the most powerful families in Britain. I'm glad I've come here actually because I remember seeing this castle in King It's video when they went around Scotland in custard and I remember thinking I really want to go there that's really cool. So it's actually more significant coming here than I thought it was going to be. And it is nice. I guess it is worth £13.50 to come in. You do get to see a lot. Does anyone else look at trees and think how old they are and like the amount of people that have walked past them and looked at them? Like this massive tree in these grounds how long has that been there what kind of people have walked past it am i the only one that does that let me know if you also get a bit weird about trees <laughs> I'm going to put a warning in this video now because I've just been in a museum that is full of taxidermy and it was quite creepy actually it was full on um, but some of the animals in there a lot of them are from Africa and the people that lived here would go on hunting trips to Africa 
and get points for the animals that they could shoot. Those animals have then been brought back to this castle from Africa and they're being stored in this museum. And yeah, a bit crazy. So here's a disclaimer in case you get grossed out by that sort of thing or you find it offensive. Um, yeah, don't say that I didn't warn you. crazy super creepy i yeah although i have found a cabinet full of shells so <laughs> there's that <laughs> it's so bizarre like look at this it's just full of birds sure whether perhaps I enjoyed it more because I have literally just binged Bridgerton and it is very Bridgerton vibes but yes I would definitely recommend coming I learned all about the hunting trips and competitions and I learned about Lady Helen of Sutherland which was cool it's done really well like it's laid out really interesting the way you walk through the rooms and you learn about the history I'm always a bit skeptical about visiting period houses and castles because I never really know how much of it is actually authentic from the past. I kind of feel sometimes it looks super staged and they've probably brought in a lot of props. I don't know. But it was cool and the gardens are beautiful. I spent so long faffling about taking loads of photos. Now I don't know what to do. I'm really hungry but I feel like I keep spending all of my money in cafes <laughs> when I have perfectly good cooking facilities in the van I just keep sitting in cafes what do I want to do? I have decided instead of going to another cafe that I am going to I've fed up the coast. I've been in this area for quite a few days now, so I'm just going to head up the coast a little bit more. Jesus! Right. Get off. For a castle, the roads are shocking. couple of days since I visited Dunrobin Castle and then made the decision to head further north. I decided to head to John O'Groats, completing the east coast portion of the NC500 route. The town was actually dubbed a CD tourist trap in Lonely Planet's 2005 travel guide and in 2010 it received an award for being Scotland's most dismal town. Either way, the famous signpost attracts visitors from far and wide and is a must visit along the NC500. I feel like this first stretch of the NC500 has gone so quickly and I crammed in so much hiking, but it's been so much fun getting up to this point and I feel like John O'Groats is that first milestone, that kind of checkpoint along the route. Thanks for watching this week's video. Here's a clue for next week's video. It's one hell of an adventure. Subscribe to keep me company on the road and I'll see you next week.